The people of St. Louis love their city flag. Every time we post a video about anything, they're in the comments like, do St. Louis, do St. Louis. Well, you can stop because I'm here. We're doing it. Now, the North American Vexillological Association ranked this number five in terms of best city flags in the country back in 2004. But like, I don't get it. It's good, it's better than so many others, but like for me, I just don't love this flag. And so I've come here to the Gateway to the West to see if I can look past the red flags that I have for this red flag. The current flag of St. Louis has its origins in 1962, when the mayor decided he wanted to revamp the old flag for the upcoming city's bicentennial. So he got together a committee of five members, and ultimately it was designed by one of those members, and I want to get his name correct. It is Professor Emeritus Theodore Sizer, Presuviant of Arms at Yale University. And Yale is not here in St. Louis. In fact, he was the one member of the committee that wasn't from St. Louis at all. So all of you who are in my comments talking about, you can't design a flag unless you're from a place. Bullshit. Sizer was an expert in heraldry, which is that ancient art of coat of arms and such. And it makes sense why heraldic elements made it on their way to the flag when it was officially adopted in 1964. The flag of St. Louis starts with a red background, or a field as we call it in vexillological terms, and on top of that is two blue and white wavy bars that come in from the corners of the hoist edge to a point of convergence near the center of the flag, and from there they continue as one big wavy blue and white bar all the way till the fly edge. This represents the confluence of the Missouri River into the larger Mississippi River behind me. Over that point of confluence is a round golden disc with a blue fleur-de-lis. The disc represents the Louisiana Purchase, of which St. Louis is right in the center of. And in heraldry, a golden disc or bezant is usually used to represent a coin or a purchase, so this makes sense. On that disc is a blue fleur-de-lis, and you can find fleur-de-lis all over this city. It, of course, represents the French influence of the early city and Saint-Louis of France, which is the namesake of what we Americans now affectionately call St. Louis. Now you might be wondering, wait a second, Michael, why don't you like this flag? What's wrong with it? Well, as a graphic designer, my eyes are drawn directly to the waves and how they're inconsistent. The peaks of the waves are inconsistently spaced. The, the radius of the waves themselves are inconsistent. And the fact that they don't hit the corners leaves this really weird negative red space right next to the hoist. It all bugs the crap out of me. If you're like, wow, this, that sucks for this guy who has to walk through the world looking for little stupid things like that. Well, welcome to the club, because once you see it, you can't unsee it. And now that I run a flag company, let me just say, this is a really hard flag to reproduce, especially at different sizes. But if there's one good thing that I have to say about it, I like the way he used color. Instead of one color representing one thing, he used combinations of colors to represent certain things. And I've never seen a flag do that. For instance, the red and the gold represent Spain, who was the first to colonize this land. Then the white and the gold represent Bourbon France, who took over after that. The blue, white, and red are for Napoleonic and Republican France. And then, of course, the red, white, and blue represent the United States, who bought this after the Louisiana Purchase. And that brings me to another thing that I don't love about this flag, is that the colors represent all of the previous colonizers of this land, and they reference nothing of the rich indigenous culture that settled this land for thousands of years. I mean, St. Louis was called Mound City because of the ancient Cahokia mounds and other indigenous settlements around the area. The flag references none of that. Since I was in town, I had to come visit Golden Gems, which is one of our favorite stores that sells flags for good. If you're looking for a St. Louis flag and you're in town, definitely come give them a visit. But if you're not in St. Louis, you could always go to flagsforgood.com. Is the St. Louis flag good? Yeah, of course it is. We sell it at flagsforgood.com. 
but I give it a B plus or an A minus because you just don't see as many of them around the city as you would a Chicago or a DC which have perfect flags. Now, a lot of businesses get really creative with their use of the St. Louis flag, including the one that I just stumbled upon behind me. Now, look what they've done. They fixed a lot of the problems that I mentioned earlier, and I really like this redesign. And now for the thing that literally no one asked for, how I at Flags for Good would fix the St. Louis flag. First of all, we have to get rid of that really annoying negative space on the hoist. So if we just move those rivers to the corners, it, it immediately makes it better. From there, what I did was I took the rivers and made them larger. What that does is it removes the amount of waves in the river, which decreases visual noise, as well as it makes the visual balance of all the colors feel a lot more refined and purposeful. I'm back in Indianapolis, which is now my home somehow. I still find it weird to call Indy my home because I'm a pretty new transplant to the Midwest. But one thing that I have noticed, and I hope you see too, is that a lot of the best city flags in the United States are concentrated in the Midwest for some reason. And if you think a lot like I used to, you might think, well, the flag is the best part of these cities because it's the Midwest. But as I spend more time here, I keep finding that all of these places have really cool pockets of progressive, exciting things happening. And that these places are really underrated for those who may stick to the coasts. And I'm gonna take that as an excuse to continue exploring these really cool places and seeing if they live up to how good their flag is. So let me know what you think in the comments, whether you like the St. Louis flag or not. And of course, which city or state I should go and explore and explain their flag next. I'm Michael from Flags for Good. Thanks so much for watching. Please don't rain. All right, this is the take. This is it. This is the one. The flag of St. Louis. Shouldn't yell. Here to make a video about some mounds and a flag, I guess. I don't know if you can see St. Louis because Canada's on fire. You're pink and you're really in my shot. Yeah, go up there, go up there, go up there. Yeah, 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 get out of my shot. Get out of my shot.